What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're going to jump in on the launch day of Season of the Worthy with a whole bunch of Season of the Worthy info. So we do have a new mini Vidoc from Bungie. They jump in, talk about the new activity content, exotics, the artifact, some of the gear that we'll be picking up, and a few extra details, so obviously that's pretty exciting. We're going to round up all of that, but also we're going to touch on some of the major changes, rounding up patch notes and previews for update 2.8.0, which is the one that we're getting today at the launch of Season of the Worthy. So we've got a lot to talk about in this video, guys. If you do enjoy it, a rating below really helps me out. But now, let's get into it. Initially, Bungie do show us a new gameplay preview right here. Obviously, loads of cool cinematics. It better look at some of the activity content and things like that. We'll run the full video in the moment, but for a brief breakdown, they talk about how the Cabal have taken over the Almighty, destroyed its controls, and set it on course for the last safe city. Looks like there'll be some pretty cool cinematic content there as well. And throughout the story, we're going to see if Rasputin can step up and help save humanity. In the trailer, they do show us the entrance to the European Dead Zone Bunker. I believe that's the first one we're going to get access to at the launch of Season of the Worthy. And we can see that the entrance right here is in the sludge in the European Dead Zone. And from how they describe it, it sounds like we're going to have to head into the bunkers and potentially clear them out as a kind of opening section before we can unlock everything in this Seraph Towers, which is the public event. So. Seraph Towers is the new activity where we'll be powering up Rasputin's defenses, and basically we'll follow a series of pursuits through bunkers, new adventures, and Seraph Towers to unlock some of the new rewards. Also, we see one of those Rasputin robot things, which is actually called an Elite Heavy Frame in the game, which is pretty cool. They do show us a little bit of Trials gameplay right here, where we see some of the new medals. And also the auto rifle, which very much appears to be behaving like a Doctrine of Passing or a Max Rate of Fire auto. But it is landing 182 damage per crit. We did see some funky damage numbers before in one of the Trials trailers, so not sure what's going on with that just yet. But of course, we do get a look at the weapon and then the flawless chest in the lighthouse here with Saint-14 nearby, so that's a cool little preview. But we've got the Warmind Kanjali. I think that's how you say that. This is the new artifact for the season, though. And we get a preview of a couple of the mods there, so Passive Guard, these are some of the top tier mods, but receive less damage from combatants that are close to you while you are wielding a sword. That could be interesting. We've also got Soul of the Praxic Fire. Activating Solar Class abilities grants an overshield and increases the cooldown of your class ability. But also Tyrant Surge, defeating a combatant with a 7th Seraph weapon has a chance to drop a Warmind Cell, and multiple copies of this mod do not stack. It also has the perk dealing damage with Arc Melee, Super and Grenade abilities spawns a Warmind Cell. Not entirely sure what those are. Sounds kind of similar to the Charged with Light mechanic potentially that we saw last season. But also they do show off the Nightfall Ordeal screen with Grandmaster difficulty. We can also see that Legend, Master and Grandmaster are listed there. Legend at 1000 power, Master at 1030 and then Grandmaster at 1060. And for Grandmaster modifiers it does say we've got Scorched Earth, a modifier called Shocker, Champions All, as well as Chaff, Prime modifiers, Extinguish and Limited Revives, with a common drop chance of Exotics and Ascendant Shards. Sounds like that could be pretty rough. The description text simply reads, good luck. So we'll see how that goes, but they also show some of the quality of life changes to armor, and we'll cover that in the patch notes at the end of the video. They show us a new exotic for Hunters as well, Raiju's Harness. And that comes with Mobius Conduit, which we can see as a bonus for Whirlwind Guard. I'm sure someone will spend ages cleaning that image up and getting a preview of the perk. There are other mods that we can see, Power of Rasputin, where defeating a combatant with a 7th Seraph weapon has a chance to drop a Warmind Cell. We've got new Charged with Light mods there as well. The potential to keep building with that stuff is definitely still in the game. Also, Tommy's Matchbook does appear to be a 900 RPM auto. We can see the perks Shock and Overheated on the screen. Shock is probably happening because the Guardian is actually being electrocuted. I'm not sure if Overheated is maybe going to be a bonus from the weapon, but totally worth making note of those. And before we talk about patch notes right here, if you want to check out the full trailer, we're going to run it right now, although if you want to jump ahead to some of the patch note previews, I'll timestamp that in the description box below. Guardians in Destiny are really powerful. You put us up against anything on two legs and we can take it down on our own, but how do you stop a spaceship? The Red Vigen has boarded the Almighty. They're blowing up all the controls and they're setting it on a collision course for the last city. Rasputin stands with the Guardians, but what's he gonna do when an impending threat comes? Is he willing to like really put it up on the line for humanity? Is he willing to step up when we need him?
It's really important that we're continuing to tell the story of what's happening in the world. So we had a cabal threat for season nine where they were trying to change the outcome of the Red War. They failed. They've got one last desperate play. And it's up to us with Rasputin's help to stop them. You'll go into one of the public spaces on EDZ and all of a sudden there's something there that wasn't there before. Rasputin had all of these hidden bunkers that have been around since the Golden Age that we didn't know about. And you need to help clear out the enemies that have infested those bunkers so that he can get to work. And then you go into the world where you're helping him build up his arsenal. The new seasonal activity is Seraph Tower, which is about powering up Rasputin and setting up its orbital defense network. Also, Rasputin sends you into these legendary lost sectors to reclaim items of his that have been stolen. By building up Rasputin's super weapon, he's going to help you by giving you power. You're going to be able to find armor and weapons from Rasputin's lost guardians of the war mine. Connection locked. Good to see you, Guardian. We want every season to be a mix of content for players, stuff that you really want to have to be there for that's a moment in time. When they come, we will stand together as equals. But we also want to add permanent additions to the game. We're bringing back Trials in Season of the Worthy, but it's going to stick around. It's like an anchor point for yeah. us. Trials is our returning end game PvP ritual. So we internally talk about trials being the raids of PvP, but the most difficult bosses in trials are other players using every advantage they have to get access to weapons and armor they can't get any other way. This season, the artifact mods focus on close-range weapons, so SMGs and sidearms are all going to get a lot of screen time. Swords are a lot more potent. There's a lot more flexibility with them. We've layered on a new difficulty to the Nightfall ordeal. The goal was to create an experience that's hard even for our hardcore. We have a bunch of quality of life changes coming for armor. The biggest one is that you can now change your armor's elemental affinities. The seasonal mod slot can hold the mods from the season in which it's released, plus the mods from the previous season and the next season as well. We have increased the number of armor sets that are in the whirlpool. We've got some cool new weapons. Tommy's uh, matchbook. Tommy's matchbook is all about being a wild gangster jumping in and spraying bullets haphazardly at your own risk. And the best part is, every time you get a kill, you get to say, keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs>We always want to focus with seasons on creating that evolving world and creating impactful moments. We have our own plans for where we're taking the story and where we want to take Destiny. We also are always listening to our players and what they want. And your actions, the actions of other characters that you care about, they matter and change the world. And you're going to want to be there and see that happen. The thing that I'm most excited about is really paying off this Rasputin story. We have a lot of open threads throughout Destiny's history, and we want to tie up some of the loose ends that we've left behind, and Season of the Worthy is another step forward in the overall story of Destiny. Be sure to let us know what you guys think about the content that Bungie have revealed, but now we're going to jump in and talk about the previews and patch notes that we have for update 2.8.0. We'll do a roundup right here, but also I'll link the full release patch notes down in the description below. Of course, Bungie are replacing the Bright Engram with a new daily rotating module that'll feature one item from a small selection of ships, sparrows, ghosts and finishers that were offered in previous seasons. It's the only major change to Eververse, but there are other investment changes, so for legendary engrams, Bungie have increased the number of armor sets available, and so there will be 11 sets that can drop from the world engram. A bunch of those have come as part of this update, and that includes faction rally armor, which will work with the old faction rally ornaments, and then a bunch of other sets that were previously unavailable as armor 2.0. For armor stats, Prime Engrams will now more reliably drop armor with higher overall stat rolls, 
Exotic armor will more reliably drop with higher overall stats, and legendary armor has an improved chance of receiving higher overall stats, although low stat rolls will still be present. Those are definitely very good changes for armor pieces, but then of course, for the user interface in the game, on console, they've updated the UI layout to match the experience on PC. Also, console players can now change the color of the reticle on console. They've added hint text during loading screens, comma separators to glimmer, and that's when you actually see the glimmer count in the loot stream on the side. And they've added categories for the main quest screen, and that will include new light quests, all quests, shadow keep, seasonal, playlists, exotics, and then the past. And those will be the categories that quests are actually sorted into. There also have been a bunch of upgrades and performance changes, so UI stuttering and frame rate drops when loading or applying mods, which was a pretty big one. But they've improved frame rate inside of Gambit and Gambit Prime, as well as the sanctified mind encounter in Garden of Salvation, the tunnel encounters in the Pit of Heresy, high frame rate stutter on PC, and general performance improvements on PC as well. When it comes to armor progression and mods though, for this season Bungie have increased the gear cap score by 40 points, and so now powerful gear can drop up to 1000, and then pinnacle drops can go up to 1010, and obviously otherwise we have the artifact to work with. Bungie also announced that they will be making some changes to pinnacle loot in an update that we'll get in the middle of this season, so look out for those, but of course we now have the functionality and the ability to change the elemental affinity on any piece of armor. This will be able to be done from the inspection screen on the item by hovering the cursor over the armor's energy icon, and that'll give you the option to change it to either of the other two affinities. This will cost one upgrade module, but then of course you may have to actually upgrade some of that armor again once you've changed affinities, so we'll see how that goes. But Bungie have also added the kind of three season mod slot on pieces of armor, and so any new armor from this season will still be able to support the mods that we get in Season 11, which is next season. Of course, they will support the new mods for this season, and they'll also support the mods from the previous season. And in any given season, new armor will essentially work like that. On the subject of armor, though, of course, we have the exotic armor changes. And initially for Hunters, Assassin's Cowl Invisibility and Healing Effect now triggers on Powered Melee. This is both in PvE and PvP, but it also triggers on Finishers. On top of this, the duration of invisibility granted by the exotic has been increased based on the tier of enemy defeated, and Arc Staff kills will no longer activate the perk. For Frosties, they changed the ability regeneration so that it no longer stacks multiplicatively with other class ability energy generating perks. And then for Kepri Sting, all smoke bombs now deal 150% damage while wearing the exotic. But Orpheus Rigs have seen the maximum amount of super energy that you can regain from the exotic with a single use of Shadow Shot capped off at 50%. And then finally, for Younger Hamkara's Spine, it will increase the explosion radius for trip mines by 14%. But then we have a list for the Titans, so for the Ashen Wake, killing an enemy with a fusion grenade while wearing the exotic will refund grenade energy, and the amount of grenade energy refunded will scale based on the tier of enemy killed. When it comes to Antaeus Wards, the shield created during a slide will no longer allow chip damage through. They fixed Doomfang Pauldrons so that they no longer can grant super energy from melee kills while in a super. Increase the radius of the static charge of Dune Marchers to 20 meters, up from 12. And then for the Mark 44 standard sides, they've reduced the delay from the start of sprinting until the overshield comes in to 0.5 seconds, down from 1.25 seconds. And then of course for One-Eyed Mask, the target marking from the exotic has been replaced with target highlighting. It no longer provides a damage bonus when you defeat the marked target, but they did restore the previous overshield granted by defeating a marked target, which now has a duration of 6 seconds, down from 8. The final titan changes for Severance Enclosure, and the explosion now triggers on powered melee, both against combatants and guardians, as well as finishers, and then the radius and damage of the explosion created by the exotic increases based on the tier of enemy defeated. And now we have our Warlock changes, so Apotheosis Veil vale is now guaranteed to drop with a minimum of plus 16 to Intellect. They've reduced the damage reduction granted on Controverse Hold to 20% from 40%, and then the Sanguine Alchemy has received a complete redesign, and it's got a new perk called Blood Magic, which allows the wearer to pause the countdown timer of any rift they're standing in by getting weapon kills, and that extends the rift's duration. That's going to be pretty interesting, but then we have the Ophidian Aspects, and this now increases the lunge range of all Warlock melee attacks, even if the ability is on cooldown. And finally, Verity's Brow, where the buff provided from the exotic now increases your grenade damage by 10% per stack, and the buff to allies grenade recharge rates now kicks in when you cast your grenade. But the exotic will also provide a buff text notification indicating how many allies are currently benefiting from the increased grenade recharge. 
But now we have sniper rifles, so of course there are quite a few different changes. And damage to major enemies and above has been reduced to pre-shadow keep values, so that's minus 20%. And the adaptive sniper's precision multiplier has been reduced from 3.25 to 2.95 times. And rapid fire sniper's base impact has been reduced from 100 damage to 90 damage. Additionally for Izanagi's burden, the animation speed of owned edge is no longer affected by the reload stat, and of course, outlaw is being replaced with no distractions. For grenade launchers, aggressive frame launchers are now rapid fire frame launchers, so they've actually kind of changed the archetype up. And these launchers have had their damage reduced to account for their rate of fire, and that's 0.8 times, but now also will have an increased ammo reserve. And previously, aggressive frame launchers fired faster than adaptive, but had the same damage, so that kind of is why they're changing it. But damage to major enemies and above by power weapon grenade launchers has been reduced by 10% as well. For Lord of Wolves, the release the Wolves perk now significantly reduces the weapon's accuracy while it's active. And then for last word, fanfire now adjusts the precision scaler while hip firing. They've also adjusted the impact values there, so precision hip and ADS has been adjusted from 67.95 and 67.95 to 68.27 and 52.2. Bit of a change there, but also non-precision hip and then ADS has been adjusted from 50.01 and 50.01 to 38 and 38. Aiming down sights no longer provides additional effective range. They've reduced the stability for mouse and keyboard input with the weapon and reduced its effective range in general and adjusted the way that target acquisition is handled while hip firing, which is a pretty interesting one as well. Of course, we're going to have to see how these really feel in the game, but there are also shotgun changes. So target acquisition for non-slug shotguns has been adjusted to no longer account for precision locations, but also the cone angle has been adjusted on a per sub archetype basis and is no longer adjusted by the range stat and aiming down sights will no longer adjust effective range for the weapon archetype at all. So those should be slightly noticeable changes, but also on the subject of noticeable changes, for fusion rifles, target acquisition also will no longer account for precision locations. Damage fall off for the weapon archetype can now floor at 0.5 times, which was previously 0.75 times. Effective range and impact of the optics stat for the weapon archetype has been reduced across the board, and they talk about a specific change for the perk backup plan, which now adjusts impact to match the rapid fire sub archetype while active, and charge time is now set to match the rapid fire sub archetype which is 0.85 while active. So essentially they've made backup plan a little bit less effective. But then also there are impact value changes for auto rifles. So for precision frame order rifles, they now do 17 and 27.2 default and precision damage. And this was previously 17 and 25.5. Adaptive frames will do 15.75 and 25.2. And once again, that's default and then precision damage. And previously that was 13.75 and 22. But then rapid fire frames will do 13.4 and 20.1 default and precision damage respectively, which was previously 12.5 and 18.75, which totally gives those auto rifles the potential to be pretty nasty inside of the game now. Of course, outside of our standard weapon archetypes, though, we do have the sword changes, and swords now come with sword energy, and this is a reserve of energy that recharges naturally on its own but isn't to be mistaken with ammo capacity. Sword energy will overtake your melee slot when you're wielding a sword and is spent on various different actions. So firstly, we have guarding, and this now uses sword energy instead of consuming ammo, but different guards will have different consumption rates, damage resistance, and behaviors. So there'll be a bit of stuff to play around with in the game. We also have light attacks and grounded light attacks for all swords now loop for an infinite combo and all swords can actually cleave, which is pretty cool. And then for heavy attacks, they do consume sword energy and we'll always be able to perform heavy attacks, but the attack will be stronger if we have full energy and weaker when we don't. On top of this, Bungie added the ability for a portion of most sword attacks to partially bypass elemental shields. And so swords really are going to behave in some pretty interesting ways. It's going to be best to jump in and experience that in the game. But finally, we come to a rundown of ability changes. So of ability changes, and these affect a bunch of different classes. Bungie are extending the Warlock's basic melee range by one total meter. And so it'll have a maximum of 5.5 meters of melee range. Broadly going to be a positive change. And then Bungie are adjusting the Titan's barricade. Firstly, they're increasing how powerful it is from 500 HP to 600 HP, but that's to offset some changes to weapons because sniper rifles, grenade launchers, linear fusion rifles, machine guns, trace rifles, and anti-barrier weapons are now going to do 30% extra damage to barricades. 
but then shotguns and fusion rifles are actually going to do 60% extra damage to barricades, which is pretty nasty. On top of this, Bungie have added yellow damage numbers when hitting a barricade with a counter weapon. Also for shoulder charge, for all Titan subclasses, they have reduced the auto-targeting angle by 50%. And they've adjusted the lunge distance to 5.5 meters for both targeted and untargeted lunges. So a little bit of tune in there, but of course there is the Hunter's Weighted Knife. And Bungie have reduced its tracking significantly. So the aim assist has kind of been reduced, but they say they have new tracking tech that will make the knife more faithful to its initial throw trajectory. Finally though, there is the handheld Supernova. And Bungie have increased the activation time by 0.6 seconds reduced its hold time from 3.5 to 2.5 seconds, reduced its range by 20%, and then tightened the horizontal spread of bolts by 25%. And that's in addition to allowing bolt explosion damage to do self-damage to the player, but they've also reduced the bolt explosion radius from 3 meters to 2.5. And so handheld supernova is going to be just a little bit less potent in general. And these, of course, are some of the more major changes that Bungie are making to classes, abilities, and things like that. For today, though, guys, that rounds up everything that Bungie have put in the patch notes, all the justifications, changes, and things like that that run alongside update 2.8.0. So I hope you guys have found the video useful. If you have, a rating down below really helps me out. Let us know your thoughts on any of the changes or which content in Season of the Worthy you're most excited to play. Also, if you're new to the channel, be sure to get subscribed and turn on notifications so I can keep you up to date with all the news, guides, and that good stuff related to Destiny 2. For now, though, thanks for tuning in, guys. And whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.